So hi, welcome to Grown Ups Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... What's up, tubers? It's Zach Benson. Aaron, some, some questions to say about his upcoming album, Music For You, and your friends. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Great. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Good. Hell yeah. <laughs> the response has seemed... <laughs> Fantastic so far, as as you know, we were saying before this, spun the record this morning. It's yes. fucking awesome. It's Thank so you. good. Very it's stoked so for people to hear good. it. Yeah, Thanks a lot of ass it. shakers. It's 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 fucking incredible. Yeah. Period. That's what, mm-hmm. that was the goal. Yeah. Hell I was, yeah. I was reading the the press release that that you sent over with it, and I think you perfectly described it like the the blending of all the different genres and scenes that you find yourself in. Um, works perfectly on this record. There's everything from the slow ballads to the pop yeah. ass shakers and the alt bangers. So I'm yeah. here for this. Thank you so much. Of oh, that's the best. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. So, is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? You know that there is. <laughs> Let's do it. Tell us. Um, tell us. Actually, I lied. Originally, oh. there wasn't a meaning. Like, <laughs> okay. So, I got really obsessed with Maggie Rogers when she like first made it big, and so I've been obsessed with her for a while. And she like did an interview, or maybe it was like an Instagram post or something, where she said that. For all of her albums, before she, like, starts writing anything, she'll just make, like, a mood board of, like, colors and, like, playlists of things and, like, try to set the scene before any writing happens. And so Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, let me try. I've never done that. Yeah. And I didn't want to just call, like, all my folders and playlists, like, new album or whatever. So I just kind of pulled music for you and your friends, like, out of nowhere. I was (laughs) like, that sounds fun. Why not? Yeah, And then, like, the more that I started writing and kind of creating the world of the record, I was like, wait, this actually fits in really well. Because a lot of the songs ended up not being from my own perspective. Like, mm. I was writing about situations that I was in, but from, like, another person's perspective. Or I was writing about, like, a situation that's happened to, like, a friend. Sometimes I was just, like, making up stories. <laughs> so a lot of the record is, like... I don't know, things that are outside of my own like perspective and worldview, which was interesting to write about. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think it also kind of relates to there's a lot of like gang vocals on the record. And I had a lot of like collaborators with songwriting and the album artwork and production for the first time ever. So I was like, this feels like a friendly community based record. So yeah. um yeah, everything just kind of worked out there. And I think, too, sonically, it feels like your, like, pop or rock star fantasy, like, you screaming it in your bedroom and, like, pretending mm-hmm. you're in front of a huge crowd. So I wanted the album artwork to reflect that. And that's why I'm bending backwards in a guitar like I'm playing for 50,000 people. But it's in my bedroom, which is just what I do every single day. So. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It makes sense. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, like what was there any sort of reason why you went into like the the writing process for this turned into writing from different perspectives coming up with stories or like was it a natural progression or was it the the idea from the start i think it was a natural progression mm-hmm. like it's one of those things where you just start doing it and then you look back and try to find the through line of everything yeah mm-hmm. and um i don't know i had a few writing sessions with other people where I wasn't necessarily pulling from like personal experience but sort of like creating a narrative like a song like take a hint is sort of like that where I'm like I understand that feeling but the story of the song is sort of this like there are characters inside my head that are in that story that aren't that are based on real people but it's not necessarily like a real situation if that makes sense yeah it's not like one-to-one yeah Yeah, exactly some embellishments there do you prefer what like what style of writing do you prefer is it just whatever like the the pulling from your own experiences pulling from others pulling you know random stories like what what do you prefer is it just you prefer writing you just enjoy it in general i think i just like writing in general i think when i'm writing with other people i like the sort of narrative based like let's find a story let's find a setting let's figure out where we are Mm -hmm. but when i'm just doing it by myself like in my room it's definitely very cathartic to you know get out a real situation or something that's really happened to me 
-hmm. And then I think it was interesting too, like there's songs like White Lies, which is about like keeping in sort of uh, not necessarily secrets, but not wanting to bring up certain things in a relationship in order to just keep the ship sailing smoothly. Yeah. And that sort of like diminishes the sort of level of joy that you can feel. And that's like a bad habit that I have in like not just my relationships, but like friendships, mm -hmm. all of that. I'm very like keep it close to my chest person. Yeah. So that song is like from the perspective of my boyfriend who I know has definitely looked at me and been like, what's wrong? And I've been like, nothing nothing <laughs> and yeah. things are wrong so yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely yeah. and you mentioned this is the first time that you were writing with outside writers correct like co-writes uh no we uh for the last ep i wrote with some outside writers uh this is the first time i've worked with other producers though gotcha okay all right yeah um so then talk a little bit about that was it daunting at all to bring in other yes. producers talk yes about it, it was okay. it was so scary um <laughs> i like I had take a hint was one and then the last song on the album sweet savannah were both produced by this guy named micah performs mm -hmm. under uh quotes from movies which is like one of my favorite internet finds that i found in the last few years mm -hmm. uh he's a really great indie pop uh artist from nashville or no he's from milwaukee he lives in nashville now mm -hmm. um but i found him on tiktok and i like sent him some piano demos and I was like if you ever want to work on something secretly hoping that he would just do the entire instrumental and I could just sing on top of it yeah and he did and yep. it sounded so good mm -hmm. so um very obsessed with him he just had a new song come out called dry erase which I it's my favorite song of the spring <laughs> so uh shout out quotes from movies but it was definitely very scary to sort of hand your baby over to someone else and trust that they can make something with it um but i trusted him from the start yeah. i his music's just so damn good that i'm like you could poop on this beat and i'd be like spotify yeah. damn right <laughs> and, and did you have like that similar kind that same kind of thing when you started working with outside writers where it's like working with them on like in a weird way conceiving your baby like the, yeah yes yeah yeah i mean i think that's probably why i like sort of keep the more personal stories to myself and like try to create new narratives and new worlds with other uh people mm -hmm. like uh i think it's just easier to be vulnerable when you're you know alone in your room and you can sort of edit those most like intense moments yeah uh yeah yeah, I mean, if, that. If, if you're a very keep it to yourself person that doesn't change with art like it'll come out in the art if you want it to but mm -hmm. like it's not going to change because you're in a room yeah. full of artists writing a song and now you just feel like being vulnerable like yeah i think too i was just discussing this with somebody um the idea of like creating through either like a character or like a quote-unquote fictional story sometimes brings out that stuff in you like mm -hmm. you're able to express those things that you don't feel like you can express because you're doing it through a character yeah. exactly and then like in my case this has happened before where i've done that and then like a year later been like oh i really actually felt that way i just didn't know how to explain it in the moment so yeah okay yeah so moving forward do you think you're going to try and write through characters more often to try and get that out of you i actually have no idea <laughs> I, I think that could be very, very fun. Mm -hmm. I've kind of been playing, this is like the third big project that I've released. And I'm kind of like, I want my next thing to maybe not be like a Zach Benson project, but maybe like either through a band or like a different moniker or something, something where I'm not the only one, you know, like having my name on it and mm -hmm. yeah. all of that. Um, so that could be something that would be very fun. Okay. I don't know. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. Medieval side quest? We'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what song off this album took longest to write, and which one is your personal favorite? Ooh, uh, big questions. Mm -hmm. um, longest one to write from start to finish was probably Lock My Heart Inside a Hot Car. I had that idea two summers ago, summer of 2022. We were Shit. doing... um our like weekend tour from nashville up to richmond mm -hmm. and on the last day it was like tyler driving me in the back seat like whispering 
the melody like into my phone. Yeah. Um, and then it was like I just came back to it month after month after month, like adding a little thing here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it ended up being like Tyler's favorite song when I showed it to him in like January of 2023. So I was like, crap, I got to keep working on this because Tyler loves this song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, I it took so long to finish, but uh. I finished it. Yay! I'm yeah. glad. <laughs> uh, and my personal favorite right now is probably the last song, Sweet Savannah. It's a very sweet, wholesome, uplifting song. And I feel yeah. like I don't have very many of those. I have a lot of like cutesy relationship ones, but this mm -hmm. one is very much like, it's going to be okay, everybody. Yeah. Uh, which felt very, very nice to write. I wrote it with uh, my friend Z Machine and Landon Elliott. Uh, quotes from movies produced it mm -hmm. and um we went into it wanting to write our version of you'll be in my heart from the tarzan soundtrack and oh I think I that, yeah <laughs> which i'm stoked about <laughs> yeah that's fucking awesome oh yeah hell yeah i um, love that damn soundtrack with yeah. my whole heart Don't, no it's it's one of the best fucking bill collins did disney, not have to go that hard right? yes it, it, dude yeah i fucking old disney those soundtracks are just fucking timeless I, I love it period the yeah. tarzan soundtracks at um oh there was another one meet the robinsons from 2005 Don't rob thomas came in <sighs> and said these small wonders <laughs> i was like yes I fucking, oh my god that's one of my favorite movies of all time it's Stop. i fucking love that movie yeah. makes me cry every time so good so good it's so fucking good yeah um, so how did the track list for the album come about? Did you write the opener with the opener, close the baby closer, shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? Lots of shuffling. Lots of... Where is this going to be? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did know I had the title first for the album. I was like, the album's going to be called Music for You and Your Friends. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out what that means. Um, and so about halfway through, I was like, let me try to write an intro song called Music for You and Your Friends. Mm -hmm. And so I knew writing that, that that would be the intro. Um, and I knew, honestly, when we wrote Sweet Savannah, I was like, this feels like the outro to hmm. a project. So this should be the last song. But everything else kind of ebbed and flowed. And uh, yeah, it took a while to figure out. But I don't know. I love the reason I'm making an album is because I love albums, period. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. feel like maybe y'all are the same, but I feel like I can hear a song and be like, this feels like a track six on an album. Yeah. Like, yeah. sometimes you can just tell when you're listening to something like, this is like track number two, this is the mm -hmm. lead single. So um, yeah, that was definitely on my mind when I was writing. The last song I the last song we wrote was um, I Don't Know What I Want. And I knew that I needed to write a track five for the album. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be the track five. I need to figure out what to do. So yeah mid-tempo <laughs> you know like yeah. sort of ebbs and flows mm -hmm. um yeah yeah that's the vibe that's yeah. fucking awesome i love that you're able to because i'm kind of the same way but not i mean obviously i'm not an artist so you're actually able to make that a thing because it's your album yeah. but just kind of able to visualize like okay yeah i need to make this so i need it to sound like this i want it in this part of the album so it needs to be mid-tempo or i could hear this is the intro i could hear this is the outro just be able to kind of visualize it before it's even a thing yeah i mean That's even when i'm awesome. like even when i'm like making playlists or something i yeah. am like oh this feels like the first song of a playlist like if someone yeah. were to click on and be like let me shuffle or not shuffle through this listen to it front to back mm -hmm. like there needs to be a flow. I should be a DJ. Exactly. Someone should no, be a I'm... DJ job. Dude, that's that's a fucking, I was going to say day job, but that's a fucking night job, yeah. man. Musician yeah. by day, DJ it. by night. And where's my money? Exactly. I, non-existent. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're fucked. You'd be living on the street. It's over. But, but you're having fun. At least you're a musician. You know, music industry, man. Where, that's where the money's made. <laughs> Say that. That's the tagline. That That's is what they the say. tagline of that the music the industry. Glory yeah. and I both quit our day jobs. We're rolling it over here. Exactly. We're exactly. Right over here. Yeah. Same here. I'm not on my lunch break right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I fucking love it. I love it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Holy okay, shit. Uh, would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you were creating this album? Ooh, the album took a year and a half. So some days were good, some days were bad, as life goes. Yeah. Um, 
let me think. I came off of the EP and I was so inspired and excited and I wrote White Lies and Take a Hint and Lock My Heart and I think Sweet Savannah and Water. Yeah, a lot of the songs I wrote in the first like few months after that EP came out, which was summer 2022. Mm -hmm. And then beginning to summer of 2023 was like, Good night. I'm not focused on music at all. Yeah. I was playing Fortnite. I was Damn like, right. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I was having uh, the writer's block of all writer's blocks. Yeah. And also, like, we played a few shows that were just like flop.com, like, not great. Mm. Um, at no one's fault, but the way of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was just like not stoked on music for like, literally the first entire half of 2023 yeah and then second half of 2023 was just like random nice things happening out of nowhere like i got to like dj that emo night at Mm -hmm. the national which has been like a venue that i wanted to step foot on that stage for like so long so even if that was just like playing fucking panic at the disco like (laughs) like i was i was like this is crazy exactly Um, yeah and then like i knew like I said, I was making Pinterest boards and like all these visual things of what I wanted the album to look like. I was like, mm-hmm. even before it was finished, I knew it was like wood paneled basement, 1970s, warm colors, all of this. Yeah. And then within the same week, my friend Chris, who shot the album art, was like, do you want to do photos together? I have this crazy wood paneling and like all this set stuff. I can make it look like a 70s basement. Shit. And I was like, that's crazy. Same week, my friend Cullen, who I went to college with, hits me up and says, hi, I know we haven't talked since college, but I live in Atlanta. I film music videos. It's the writer strike, so I'm not doing anything. If you can get to Atlanta, I will film music videos for you. Also, I know we haven't talked in four years, but one of the things that I can do is put you in the 70s wood paneled basement (laughs) with all of this stuff. And I was like, I'm making this album. I have to make this album now. Yeah. There's no way that I'm not finishing this album. So, wow! It so was literally crazy. everything just fell into place perfectly. And then after that, it was like, well, I have five more songs that I need to write and finish. And so yeah. the second half of last year and a little bit of the beginning of this year was just like getting everything done. But yeah, literally like August 2023 was like, bam, 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 bam. Here's ten things that'll make you feel like a pop star. And I'm like. Yay! I'm a pop star, so Hell yeah. damn right. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love wow, that. Wow, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, um, very strange. So, how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should you do in the car with friends and dark with headphones on? Is workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? I need everybody to get into a 1970s wood paneled basement. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I need them to put down some shag carpet. Okay. Uh, light some incense lay down with your friends and just enjoy it. And if you can't do that, I think it is a perfect uh, 6 p.m. driving record. Yeah. I think that's the vibe. Like, not quite golden hour, but a little bit right before. Yeah. That clicks. Yeah. That's the moment. Yeah, for sure. Damn right. Uh, So this one should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. No more than no less than three words. It is going to be uh-huh, uh-huh. orange. Okay. Tantalizing. I don't know okay. why that one came up. <laughs> and bops. Bops. There you orange go. tantalizing bops. I actually kind of love that. Make yeah, that the no. bio. That's yeah. that's the tagline, not the music industry makes you money. That's the tagline. <laughs> Put it down. I love that. Write that shit down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? I think this album takes you on a range of emotions. I think you're going to start off, if I think about it in a lyrical narrative sense, you start off uh, a little bit unsure of yourself, unsure of where your love lies, of all of that. And then by the end, you love your cat. You love your partner. You love your friends. Uh, so I hope that you feel loved. That's it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Love that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so are you able to touch on any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of this album, positive or negative? Ooh, uh, challenging moments. Mm-hmm. Um, just like getting it started back up again in that middle section. Uh, mm-hmm. I had so much of it like written, uh, but it was just like getting over the hurdle of writing the rest of the record and getting it all finished and recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the most challenging was oh my gosh it was trying to figure out how to record uh guitars because i'm really bad at recording guitars so oh. matt from uh pulses did a bunch of them but it took me a while to like reach out and ask even though he's like a friend of mine and we hang out <laughs> yeah i'm like hey, hey would you want to help me with my album a little bit <laughs> i know record I the like, guitars for me mm-hmm. um but he crushed it. I just went over one day and he did it in like an hour. And I was like, why did it take me so long to like. <laughs> Could have been done dumbass. months ago. I know. Yeah. It was stupid. But yeah. he crushed it. He did very, very well. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Matt the goat. Yes, yeah, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music. So if you could be one animal for the rest of your life, what animal would you be and why? I'd be my cat, Charlie, because I love her so damn much. And all she does is scream, cry and sleep. And yeah. I relate to that. I would want to be right. your cat because I would get you would sing at me. Yeah. Say that. I can't do that anymore. She know whenever I like go to set up my camera, uh-huh. she runs away. She knows she knows exactly what's oh about to happen. God. I know. Oh. oh, maybe it's like out of like respect. She like doesn't want to, you know, mess up your flow. That's so true. But yeah. she's ruining she's ruining yeah. the TikTok virality. So is it really That's very true. Is it really nice of her to do that? Well, you can't, here, you can't have both. Here's the other deal. Mm-hmm. And I was going to make a TikTok rant about this, but then I think I realized I might have been in the wrong and I didn't want to get like wasted <laughs> for it. So I'm, okay. I'll just say it here where we'll just see. Yeah. So like TikTok changed the way that they monetize videos. Mm-hmm. I was like in the TikTok creator fund, which doesn't give you a lot of money, but if your video gets a certain amount of views, you get money and all this. Mm-hmm. And I think the most I got was like, I had a video get a million views and I got like $50 or something. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> slay. Yeah. Um, they changed the rules for monetization a week before those like videos of me singing to my cat Popped went off. viral. Mm-hmm. So um, it was like um, your video had to be over a minute long in order to make money. And none of those mm-hmm. videos were over a minute long. And I think I lost out on like at least $500 from that not being a thing. And I wanted to yell about it, but I was like, maybe I'm just missing something or didn't do something right. But I'm like, that sucks. You know, I'd be pissed. Yeah, I do. I was pissed. I I do remember seeing something that they changed it to a minute because then I'd be, you know, on my For You page, the video would be 50 seconds long and someone would throw something for the last 10 seconds like people used to do on YouTube when you had to hit the 10 minute oh God, mark like for monetization. Cards? Yeah, like end cards, end cards or a still image because I, I have to yeah. get it to a certain amount of time to get paid. Like, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. Let's Wait, bring back ne- outros. The next TikTok I post, I'm going to make an outro for it. <laughs> you, like, should actually, like a, you should make a 10 second long TikTok and then just yeah. a 50 second outro. <laughs> That's With fucking so funny. music and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like an ad break in the middle of it. <laughs> Gotta Literally, get paid somehow. The possibilities so are funny. endless. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I actually love this. I'm gonna That's do that now. Good. Please. Good. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, if you could have lunch with any celebrity or artist, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Why was the first name that came to my mind? Harry Houdini. <laughs> okay. I'll stick with that. Oh. I'll be like, okay. be like Dua Lipa. Houdini. What a great song. Are y'all familiar with Dua Lipa? Yes, I'm actually very excited for our upcoming record. Those singles have been incredible. Have you been following that? Yeah. Holy shit. I'm. Glory was laughing at me yesterday because I was like, Tate McRae announced New Jersey show. It goes on sale Thursday. I will be there. And she's like, are you serious? I'm Is like, this a joke? Dude, her record was fucking sick. Why wouldn't I be there if I can afford the tickets? And Say that. I, you know, I've been I've been in uh, getting a little bit into pop music um, since you know checking out that record. And Dua Lipa has been someone that's been popping up on the TikTok a lot. And those singles, man, they're catchy as shit. I don't care. Like they're good. Her videos are great. Dua Peep is 
one of the ones for me. You yeah. know who just announced a tour today that I really, really want to go to? Yeah. Who? Pitbull and T-Pain. No it's fucking way. It's not hitting way. New Jersey. It's a fucking crime. Wait, is it hitting Virginia? Virginia uh, Beach and uh, Jiffy Lube live. Oh, well, Jiffy Lube, that's so far away from me. Virginia Beach it is. I will be <gasps> seeing Pitbull. Oh, yeah. my God. Holy shit. Fuck Are you going and to T-Pain. Oh, yeah, that's cool, too. <laughs> Pitbull is, is the main attraction for me. I mean. Dolly. <laughs> Dolly. <laughs> It's a 305. <laughs> Holy shit. I it's used to be. Shane went through a phase like in like 2019. Nah, it 2020? was. 2020? Nah, we were when on Twitter at that, that point. Damn. The Pitbull phase? It, yeah, he went through a big Pitbull phase. And As I've you never. I, right. I've never like heard Pitbull speak before. So every time Shane would send like Dale, I'd be like, why the fuck are you just saying Dale? Like just randomly, just fucking sending Dale like and it would be like Jr. an exclamation mark. I'd be so fucking confused. Why are you tweeting Dale? I now that I know, I'm, I'm so excited. I get as it. you should I, be. I there it. was this one TikTok of him doing like a cheers where mm. he was. I gotta remember what it was. It was like, um, life is not a waste of time, and time is not a waste of life. So let's stop wasting time and get wasted tonight. And there was like a year long period where. Whoa. I would just be like drinking water and I would be screaming that to anyone who was around me. It was so he's funny. He's so inspirational. And his social media beautiful. too. He's got yeah. like motivational Mondays and shit. Like I okay. love I love Pitbull and his bald fucking head. Did you, you can... see the video? So Sorry to completely derail this interview. No, Did you see the video of him performing at like the Jimmy Buffett memorial that happened like a week or two ago? No. No, I'm so it's out of like, touch. Ew. The stage, I think it was like Hollywood Bowl or some other big LA venue. Mm -hmm. But um the stage for this Jimmy Buffett memorial or like tribute show or whatever it was was like the most stacked lineup I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And one side of the stage is like Paul McCartney and like just legends, but it's also like stand-up comedians. Like I think uh Will Arnett was there for some reason. What the fuck is Will and Arnett then, doing there? I don't know. <laughs> and then Pitbull was just on the other side. And then the TikTok I saw was this like group of girls who were just filming Pitbull and being like, We need Pitbull to go say hi to Paul McCartney right now. Like, we just need to watch this interaction happen. We need a Beatle to meet Pitbull. <laughs> yes, yes. I feel like it would be his honor to meet Pitbull, honestly. Say that. It's, it's fucking Pitbull. Say that. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't think uh, they actually ended up meeting, which oh. is very, very sad, but... Damn. Unfortunate. Yeah. Oh. Anyways, love Pitbull. Yes. How yeah. did we get on Pitbull? Oh, he announced uh, a tour. Drill, yeah, yeah, yeah he announced a tour. And but something about Dua Lipa, Tate McRae. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, think I, know you answer, I think you answered the question because oh, yeah, you said yeah, Harry yeah. Houdini. Yeah. And that got us to Dua Lipa. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay, period. Trace that back. There we go, there we go. Um, and for this last question, boom, you're on a desert island. You can bring one movie, one album, and one person. Who and what are you bringing? Okay, one movie. It is... Oh, my God. And I just watched this the other day. It is... Mm -hmm. One of the best movies in the entire world. It is Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion from 1996, 1997. Okay. Uh, fantastic movie. Great film. Can watch it 50,000 times. It has the most quotable funny lines I've ever heard in my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not into it, get into it. Okay. Uh, what else was there? Album? Yes. Mm -hmm. And person. Album and person. Mm -hmm. Album? Uh, that's so hard because you know when you're like... 19 and you decide like these are my favorite albums of all time and then you just like never think about it again yeah it's so, like the last eight years i've just had like the same favorite album that i tell people but i haven't like put much other thought into it so yeah. i'm like yeah, that's oh fair. no so i guess my favorite album is give up by the postal service so that would be the album that i bring okay. there you which go. i'll still stand with i saw them last year in concert and obsessed very great held up good okay very great um and person, it would be my partner Brandon because he's my partner, and I love him. Not there you go. Pitbull. Sorry. But... <laughs> oh, <laughs> not Pitbull. All right, Pitbull would be number two. Okay, we'll there just you put go. Pitbull yeah, on very the close, island right? anyway. If yeah. it was the three of us on an island, it would be mm -hmm. the most insane experience of my life. It would be a fever dream. I'd be like sure. Pitbull. Have you listened to the Postal Service? <laughs> and he would say, <laughs> he would say, Dale. <laughs> he would say, No, time is not a waste of time. Life is not a waste of life. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm obsessed with people. Okay. That's awesome. great. That's great. Um, so as I said, that's all the questions you have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Music for you and your friends. May 17th. Not the same day as the 21 Pilots album. They moved it because they were afraid. Yes. Of I'm Billie glad someone Eilish. else said it. No. Because <laughs> everybody me. is saying, oh my God, I can't believe. I'm so glad that they're taking another week for their art. No, motherfucker. It's, it doesn't it's take Billie one Eilish. more week to record music videos at that fucking level. He's scared. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah. And they that. should be. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I know. Ironically enough, they moved it to the week with no big releases because that week had uh zane and billy eilish so they were double fucked you They're know like, what it's over you need to push your album back a week so you just fuck them over completely <laughs> say that yeah so then you, you like, take sorry the everybody one. sorry i music videos you gotta yeah. say the exact same recreate i'm filming his, more his music video. videos yeah. exactly oh guys i gotta move it oh what a it's crock so of shit what a crock of shit know. that he pissed, pissed me, off. me off so bad yeah. i oh yeah. don't get me started don't you like, better drag i Tyler Joseph, get on this podcast and defend yourself. No, 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 no. I'll just fucking mute him and I just, I just fucking go in. Oh my yeah. god. Okay. Whew. That yeah. makes sense. All right. Well, thank you for now. It's been Zach Benson and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.